In this video, I want to answer a few questions that came out of the digital know-how course in the last week about compression guidelines for your screencast when you're uploading it to different sites, as well as whiteboarding and a few other things. Hey guys, Mel Claro here with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. So I got a few questions here. <clears throat> so uh, here's one that came from uh, Megan, uh, and she's basically asking, how do I mount my existing camera? There's a few other uh, things that came in there. She's got some issues with her Logitech and so on. But the way you're doing it now is fine. But essentially, the key thing that I want to point out to for everybody else as well is when you mount your camera and you're using a screencast where you're screencasting, you're including picture in picture like this, try and have at least a 10 to 15 degree offset from where your screencast is because you know what if you're if you if your computer is sitting right here underneath the camera and you're using the webcam that's on your camera what you end up doing is you do a screencast like this where you're looking down in your computer showing a screencast and then you're looking up at your users and then sometimes you forget to look at your users and you're just doing the screencast and there's no ability to be able to flip this camera like if I was to flip this picture in picture around to try to point you know, kind of visually point to something I'm looking at on the screencast, it doesn't really work. But if you have a 10 or 15 degree offset, then I can be pointing something on my computer and then we can flip the camera around or the picture in picture around to more visually reference the things that you're pointing out in your screencast. So try to have that 10 to 15 degree offset for where, where your camera is and from where the, the plane of your computer is. All right. So next question. In any case, Megan asked, uh, I just uploaded a video file to Vimeo, which is a hosted hosting, a video hosting service uh, that we wanted to be iPhone friendly. Great question. It ended up being 582 by 440 in terms of the dimensions. And, um, and so her question is, is it okay as long as she's using the recommended file size uh, or should you should go smaller or does, do I need to crop it and make and resize it to be 640 by 480? And the answer is, you know what, if you examine, if you already have it at 582 by 440 and you've already uploaded it there, I'd say just go ahead and leave it at 582 by 440 because the dimensional differences between, we're going to kind of go geeky here, but the differences between 582 and 440 and the other dimensions that you point out here at 640 by 480 uh, is really exactly the same. They're actually exactly the same dimensions. They're called the four to three type of a ratio. We talk about that in the course in various modules, uh, more specifically in uh, module four, where we start talking about production workflows and those kinds of things. Um, but you know what? So if you already have it up there at 582 by 440, I would say just go ahead and leave it up there. And if it looks overly pixelated or blurry and you don't like it for some reason, then I would say go back to your screencast, re, uh, then re render it. But you know what? Instead of going at 640 by 480, I would say go ahead and re-render it as big as you can. Go with 1024 by 768, as a matter of fact, happens to be. If you look at 1024, 1024 by 768, those are the same ratio dimensions as 640 by 480 or even 582 by 440. Okay? Make it as big as you can. Here's why. Because when you do that, you're actually increasing numbers of pixels that you're, you're uploading to, to YouTube. You have higher resolution. Um, did I say YouTube? I said YouTube. I meant Vimeo. But Vimeo is very similar to YouTube. And this is why it's safe to upload them as big as you can to sites like that. The reason is, is because they do a pretty good job of crunching it down themselves. They have what's called a codec, a coder decoder, and uh, they do a pretty good job of, uh, they have a, of compressing it in a way that, uh, that still optimizes the quality. So go ahead and give it to them as big as you can. Uh, and, but you're right to be thinking about your users and your viewers who are going to be accessing your video through mobile. I love it that you're going mobile, so that's great. But, um, uh, but what Vimeo does as well as how YouTube does it as well, they're pretty smart because they're in the business of streaming video to users, right? So they want to make it as easy as possible. So they have things like variable bitrate streaming, which is essentially like controlling, if you want to think of a garden hose that's plugged into your spigot and on the side of your house, okay? And someone's trying to take a drink from the other end of that, uh, of that garden hose, well, you can do like what I used to do when I was a kid, turn it on full blast, and of course the person gets, you know, can't, can't consume the water all that fast, so they get their face all wet. But if you want to be nice about it, you can regulate it and dial that down a little bit, and then so now the, the water streams through a garden hose and makes it a little bit easier to consume. It's the same kind of a thing that what Vimeo and what YouTube does. They actually have some pretty intelligent programming on their side, and they can sense what the speed of the bandwidth is that the user is trying to access those videos. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll regulate that spigot and feed it to them uh, in, in more of a streaming kind of a fashion. So it, they might even down 
downgrade, downgrade the quality of the video a little bit, but they're trying to feed it to the, UC, to the consumer in a way that they can, they can watch a video without all that stuttering and buffering and all that stuff. Okay, so, uh, so good question there. Now what you're talking about though, when you think about 640 by 480, a lot of times we're thinking we have to upload it to Vimeo and YouTube at 640 by 480 because that's the dimensions we want to display it at. They're kind of two different things. You can upload it at 1024 by 768 and still display it at 640 by 480. All right, final question here comes from Cliff. In this screencast, and he's showing, a, he gave me a link to a screencast, the guy has a tool that draws circles and arrows and he's able to draw lines and so on across over his web pages. And I've been trying to find his software, but I can't. If you get a chance, could you take a look and tell me what that software is? And the answer is, if you take a look at module four, um, when we talk about alternate presentation formats, okay, that that module talks all about that stuff. It talks about mind maps, it talks about um, uh, whiteboard type presentations, and this guy named Saul Khan from Khan Academy, when he's you know writing, like little teeny tiny writing, and he's writing math equations or whatever, and he's actually using pen and ink type hand, you know, handwriting, uh, that's what he's doing. He's, so he's using something like what's called screen draw uh, for the window side. And But the nice thing is if you're using Camtasia Studio version 8, Camtasia uh, TechSmith bought screen, screen Draw. Well, I'm not sure if they bought it, but it is integrated into, into Camtasia Studio 8. So Screen Draw is in there. And you'll be able to find that out again. We talk about how you access that in that uh, alternate presentation format in Module 4. Okay. The other thing is if you're on the Macintosh side, now there, uh, Camtasia Macintosh hasn't integrated any type of a screen draw application in there so what you'll need to do is go and get third-party software and the one that I use is uh, if you go to Snowmint again we talk about it in module module uh, 4 in the alternate presentation topic uh, alternate format topic um, if you take a look at that, we talk about Snowmint is the name of the vendor and they have a product called Ultimate Pen. I just love it because it's really fine in terms of when you're writing. It really does feel like you're writing, uh, you know, including the little trailing edges and so on. Okay, so, uh, so take a look at that if you're on a Macintosh. And Camtasia Studio version 8 using the screen draw application is built in there if you're on the Windows side. Okay, so those are some of the tips on that. And um, the final thing I would say is also pay attention in that topic where we talk about you'll want a Wacom tablet or a bamboo tablet or something like that with a nice little stylus that goes along with that and all that so because you don't really want to be trying to draw cursive or draw pen and ink kinds of things using your mouse so you want like a pen uh, a stylus pen with that all right if you're this is your first time here uh, go ahead and uh, hit like hit subscribe uh, and you'll want to, uh, to take a look at us and then if you're ready for your own screencasting be able to do maybe create your own online courses uh, with screen using screencasting technology it becomes very critical uh, to be able to differentiate your videos. If you're ready for something like that, go ahead and hit this button over here and that'll take you to my digital know-how course. This button. This one. Click it. <laughs>